It's not just another day in your life. Things are changing for the better. At Comcast, we see those changes and we're thinking about how we use technology today to live, work, learn, and play. And we're building for the future now, so we're better prepared for the wants and needs of tomorrow. That's why Comcast is rolling out multi-gig internet speeds to more than 50 million homes and businesses before the end of 2025, making our already industry-leading network even faster, smarter, greener, and more reliable. Over the decades, Comcast has been your partner, working hard to serve your community, and will continue to be your partner. We're expanding our gigabits so you can enjoy the tiny bits that matter most. It's Not Your Fault is a podcast for parents, caregivers, and young people navigating the world and its challenges. Here's your host, Brandon Jones. Greetings, everybody, and welcome back to another installment of It Is Not Your Fault, a team mental health podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Jones, and as you can see, we are not in our typical location for this week's podcast. We are remote reporting live from Indianapolis, Indiana, <clears throat> and we are in the midst of a political storm, <laughs> which is what we'll be talking about on today's podcast. So I hope everyone's doing well. I hope that uh, people are safe. I hope that people are filtering and taking care of themselves to the best of their abilities. And that's what we're going to be talking about on today's podcast is how do we help young people maintain a good emotional mental health during chaotic social times. If you've been paying attention to the news lately, things have gone extremely political. You had former President Donald Trump uh, had a, a failed assassination attempt, but he did get shot and another person lost their life. We've had current President um, Joe Biden uh, withdraw from re-election process, and that has allowed Kamala Harris to take the lead and being the Democratic nominee as of right now, that may change. Um, and we are seeing society do society like things again. We have a lot of, we have a, another viral um, police shooting that has taken place and that has sparked a lot of debate um, and a lot of conversations around racism, white supremacy and things of the like. So there's a lot happening, and I expect for a lot more to go on as we continue to move forward, which brought to me this thought process and why I wanted to do this podcast, even though I'm um, not in my normal podcasting location and places. I said, what do we do? Well, how do we talk to the young people in our lives when this when it seems like the world is just spinning and spinning and spinning around us? And it seems like sometimes we don't even know what we can do, what we should do, or how we should go about doing anything is there something that we can do or do we just allow things to happen so i put my brain power on i just had to go reflect um you know as i'm in another city and seeing how people are having conversations and passing or choosing not to have conversations about some of these things think about, okay wh what is the typical young person who's coming across this on their devices or hearing about this at school or it's the summertime so hearing about this and social dynamics are online. Um, how are they dealing with these things? You know, what are they dealing with? And um, you know, in today's world, young people face unprecedented things, right? That was our favorite word during the pandemic, unprecedented times. And these are definitely unprecedented times with young people who have access to information, technology is rapidly changing. Um, you know, the socialization that we once known has shifted completely due to the pandemic and you know young people today have voice that young people of yesterday did not have um as strong as probably the best way to say it so we just have a different dynamic that's at play we have social media pressures peer pressures and global events all taking place in the young person's life and these things can be overwhelming so how do we help them navigate these turbulent times there are several steps that I kind of jotted down and wanted to share with you all. Um, the first step and the first thing I think is important is always to create an open and safe enough space for conversation. Now, 
comfort level is always going to, to be different for different people. And some people may have safe spaces and some people may not. But what's important to understand is you want to make sure the young people in your life feel safe enough to have dialogue with you. Um, verbal conversation is important, but sometimes I know that that's not a possibility with some of the young people in our lives. So written communication can also help, whether that's through text, email, handwritten notes, whatever the case may be, that's important. But creating that space for open conversation is very, very vital. Um, you know, I recently have gone through some personal matters myself, and, you know, I don't have a teen, an adolescent, I have a preteen, but one of the things that um, I made sure we did during this turbulent time in my own family dynamic was make sure that there was open communication so that all my kids had an opportunity to talk about what was happening, but mainly um, myself that I gave space for my kids to ask me any questions or to talk directly to me about any of the feelings or things that they didn't understand as far as what was happening within our family dynamic. So some of the key things that I did during that time, and I wanna pitch these off to you as well, is listening actively. What are they saying? What aren't they saying? Um, what are you picking up on? What are they trying to say? Sometimes young people don't always have the words to articulate what they're trying to say. So what are they really asking? And being willing to answer those questions and then just validating their feelings. If they don't know, they don't know. If they're angry, they're angry. If they're indifferent, they're indifferent. Um, if they're happy, they're happy. Just validate it. They don't have to have match your emotions. They don't even have to have the typical emotions that go with scenarios or situations. It's important for them to feel validated in how they feel, um, no matter how, how what they express to you, because their feelings are their feelings. And I know that that can be tough because it could be something sad or grim or you know, it could be something that typically someone should, you know, be down about, but they might not be at all. And that doesn't mean that they don't care. It just means that they're processing it differently than most people, which is okay. The second tip is to encourage healthy social media habits. I mean, we can talk about this for pretty much everything in the lives of people, but limiting screen time is a key factor in this, especially when you have so much being shared, whether it's memes, video clips, um, just commentary. You want to limit that screen time to the best of your ability and then promote positive content. Something I want to talk more about is promoting positive content. You know, giving suggestions on people that you think have a positive spin or perspective on things. So they're not just willy nilly listening to anybody out there, giving suggestions, sharing documents or articles or sharing, um, you know, audio clips or video clips or whatever the case may be. So that the content is of, of a quality to your liking and the young person can understand and kind of make their own conclusions on what may be happening. The third thing, I'm going to sound like a broken record, get ready, is to teach stress management techniques, right? Always equip young people with the ability to handle their own stress effectively. I think this is something that we just need to do in general as human beings. We need to incorporate our well-being and our stress management, just like we incorporate prayer for those who do, um, because it is that it is that serious to us to maintain our health and maintain our mindsets to be in this world that we live in. Mindfulness and meditation is always good. Physical activity, definitely want to get engaged as much as possible. And then journaling. Again, broken record. I talk about journaling. I talk about the multiple forms of journaling. It's not just about handwriting to paper anymore. You can record yourself on a video, record yourself on an audio. They even got these little devices now. There's the AI things where you can pin them to your shirt and just start talking and it like takes the notes for you. I mean, we're getting all types of fancy with the technology these days. Journal, 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 physical activity, get some physical engagement, and then also be mindful of your actions. Use mindfulness techniques if you need to, or meditation or even prayer. The fourth thing I want to share with you all is to discuss the importance of being sustainable, sustainable wellness, or what people like to call self-care. I don't use the term self-care as much, but that's the term that most people know. I like to talk about being sustainable with your well-being, which is being more proactive with your self-care, which means eating healthy, uh, getting adequate sleep, and then finding hobbies and interests. I think if people do that on a consistent basis, and these things are not contributing to their stress or their pain, 
Uh, many people will be much more well off than what they currently are, believe it or not. I really truly believe that, you know, if people just focused on healthy eating, healthy enough eating, adequate sleep, and hobbies and interests, we could alleviate a lot of the pains that are going on. And I know people that say, I don't have time to figure that out, Brandon. I don't have time to figure out a hobby. I don't have time. I don't even have time to sleep, you know, eight hours a night. And that's that means you need to do some realignment. Um, because if that's happening, I mean, you're missing a huge, huge um, opportunity for your body to heal and to rest, especially if you're a young person, you definitely need to be getting that rest in. Uh, for you parents and caregivers and youth workers, uh, modeling healthy behaviors is important. You know, a lot of times young people, they observe what adults do. And if you're preaching one thing and you're engaging or, and your actions don't match, they're not going to believe you. They're, they don't believe you that you need more people. Like they're going to not do anything. So model healthy coping mechanisms, model open communication. If you can do those two things, young people will, you know, they'll trust in the stuff that you're trying to tell them. And then if you can also give them some narrative, some story about how these things work for you or how you utilize them, that also helps, especially if they trust and believe in you. Um, a couple more, stay informed and educate them, right? You know, there's a lot of stuff happening. They don't even know everything. You know, I remember when 2020 was just the, the year of all heck broke loose. And I remember I had people, parents calling and asking me, hey, Brad, I need to talk to my kid about, you know, George Floyd. I need to talk to my kid about police murders. I need to talk to my kids about rioting. And I would ask them, like, well, how old is your kid? And they like, my kid's four. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Why do you need to talk to your four-year-old about they might not need to know all that information at four years old? Now 14 may be different, but four might be a little young. And I know people have written children's books about this stuff and stuff. I personally I think that that's just kind of young. We don't need to introduce the worries of the world so young to people, especially if they're not dealing with them on a day-to-day. -day. Like I understand we want to be woke parents and all this stuff, and we want to be anti-racist, but my my view on that is sometimes things need to be age appropriate and you know three four five year olds probably don't need to be introduced to all that unless it's engaging in their life on a consistent basis now if they're seven eight nine that's a little different but those young children I, i'd say be careful when it comes to adolescents which is what this podcast is about definitely you want to be talking about these things and having conversations so um Eat that up real quick. And then the last thing that I'll share as we wrap up our podcast for today is recognize signs of distress. Be vigilant about change in behaviors with young people that are around you, whether it's you or your friends. Look for these three things. Look for withdrawal, so they're not engaging as they normally would. Look for mood swings. Are they just going off the handle? There's something unusual. And then look for sudden dips in academic progress and performance. If for some reason academics just take a dip, way lower than what they normally are um something may be going on so these are my tips for uh you know engaging young people um with their mental and emotional health especially during these times where we have chaotic social situations happening it's vital that we maintain the well-being of people and give some reassurance um for some people this feels doom and gloom all over again but we made it out of tougher situations before and i think that we have a lot more life to live and a lot more to to experience and especially for young people you don't want them to be grieving and in this space of just stagnation uh or just you know languishing in what's happening today because they feel because they may feel like it may happen to them tomorrow now it could it's always a possibility but i think it's less of a possibility than it than it um than it may feel like in the moment because it's such a heightened awareness of what's going on so that's going to conclude today's podcast again i'm brandon jones uh, this is It's Not Your Fault, a team mental health podcast. There's three places that you can connect with us. The first place is on Facebook. Um, you can just search It's Not Your Fault podcast in the Facebook search engine, and you should find us there. You'll find my tips there. You'll find old episodes and other good resources. The second place you can find us is at, or find me, is at my website, www.jegna.org. That's jegna.org o r g you can ask me questions or send me tips and or whatever you want to do uh to help you know make this podcast even better 
And speaking of better podcasts, we are on a network called Shaletta Makes Me Laugh.com. That's Shaletta Makes Me Laugh.com, where you'll find myself and other awesome podcasters giving you quality content to help you better your life. And with that, be safe, be constructive, be well, and I'll see you on the next episode. Peace. To check out previous episodes of It's Not Your Fault or to learn more about Brandon Jones, log on to Shaletta Makes Me Laugh.com. In this job, I challenge myself and grow. At Lutheran Social Service of Minnesota, Kelly makes a difference. We see people, not disabilities. I'm here for them. Lutheran Social Service is now hiring direct support professionals to work in our homes and empower people in our community. The work is rewarding, and so are the benefits. Full-time direct support professionals receive medical, dental, and vision plans, matched retirement savings, paid time off, and more. LSS is a great organization. They recognize my talents and my desire to grow. Kelly has advanced to a job as a training specialist, working with new employees to prepare them to support people with disabilities. We're neighbors helping neighbors. So do work that matters. Grow with us. Find your meaningful career at Lutheran Social Service, named a top workplace by employees. Learn more at lssmn.org slash immediate openings. Ask about the hiring bonus. You might be eligible for up to $2,000. You know Shaletta makes you laugh. But did you know Shaletta Brundage can also make you think and boost your business? Media personality, activist, and comedian Shaletta Brundage founded Shaletta Makes Me Laugh to celebrate and share the best of black culture. It's a podcasting platform. You can download 10 weekly podcasts hosted by African-American subject experts at ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com is also a production house creating broadcast quality commercial content. And Shaletta and her team of storytellers create powerful promotional campaigns to get businesses the brand awareness they're looking for. Some of Minnesota's top businesses trust Shaletta, and you can too. Get out the word about your events and products and get in front of communities of color with ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com. She's got the power to help your business. If you live in an older home, it may contain lead-based paint on walls, woodwork, and windows. Even more bad news, lead exposure can be dangerous to young children and impact their brain development. And now, the good news. Hennepin County will fix lead hazards in your home at no cost to you. We were worried because of the paint in the windows in the bedroom. They were peeling and chipping, and we know that when paint peels and chips, and it looks a certain way, that's possibly lead. We were worried for our children more so than anything. Eligible homes can qualify for up to $15,000 in upgrades. You may even qualify for new energy efficient windows. Don't worry, Hennepin County has a trusted list of pre-approved contractors. You won't even have to find companies with correct licenses or certifications. I've just done a test and it's positive. So we know that this is lead-based paint and then we know it's a hazard because it's creating dust every time this window moves and opens. And if you look in here, that's just full of lead paint chips. You won't have to stay with your cousin while you're getting the lead out. Hennepin County even pays for you and your family to stay in a hotel while the work is underway. The last good news is how easy it is to apply. Just go to hennepin.us backslash lead control to get started. I'm really happy with the program. We can go to bed knowing that our children are safe. That's hennepin.us backslash lead control. Tell your friends about it.